Hello, my friends. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How are you doing today? It's so good to be with you here on another uh, rest stop here with me, the Reverend Dr. Malachi Williams. I'm so happy to have you. And so we are here on the first Sunday of Advent. What a wonderful time it is. It is the most wonderful time of the year. We are celebrating, here it is, the first Sunday of the year. Yes, it is the first Sunday of Advent, which means that the liturgical calendar has turned and this is a brand new liturgical year. So here it is, Happy New Year. God bless you all. I'm so happy um, to be here with you on this first Sunday of Advent. Well, what has been our tradition here at the rest stop? We've been doing this for a number of years now. And you remember the first time I, I made my own little Advent wreath and then a friend of mine who's out in Boston, she saw it and she said, that will not do for next year. And she sent me an Advent wreath. And so we have been traditionally lighting the Advent wreath. And that is what we will do tonight. Um, so let's let's review the candles on our wreath, okay? All right, so let me see. Can you see it? I hope you can. Uh, uh, let's see if I can get it a better. Okay, so there you go. Tonight, we're going to light the candle of hope, which is directly across from the pink candle. And I'll get to that in a second. So we will light clockwise, okay? Clockwise, hope. The next Sunday, we will do peace. And then on the third Sunday, candle color changes to uh, a pink color or a rose color, which is the color of joy and rejoicing. And so that is the candle of joy. And then on the fourth Sunday this year, which is Christmas Eve, we will light the candle of love. And we'll also light the scented candle, which is the Christ candle. And that's always lit on Christmas Eve, whether or not Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday or not. We always light the Christ candle on Christmas Eve. And so we're excited. Are you all excited? I'm excited. All right. So let's go ahead and light our first candle and then we'll do our reading. All right. So here we are. Hallelujah. We will light the candle of hope. Hope. Hallelujah. Oh, well, we'll have to do it again. Uh, and that. That is fine. We'll just do it again. So the candle of hope. Amen. Here it is. Is it lit? It's not lighting. There we go. The candle of hope has been lit. Amen. 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 And we ask the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, fan the flames. Amen. 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 Well, here we are. So uh, as I mentioned, I am the Reverend Dr. Maliki Williams, and you have found yourself here at the rest stop. And what do we do at the rest stop? Well, we read the word of God and we rest in it. We stop, we pause, we ask the Lord to give us revelation. And we always read from the lectionary. So today I want to read uh, an epistle. I'm going to read the epistle in our lectionary readings, and that comes from 1 Corinthians. So let me go ahead and pull up our readings. I thought I had them up, and I do not. But uh, here we are, okay? So we are going to be reading from the epistle, and we'll just um, do some little reflection on here. And then after we do our reflection we will depart and we will ask the Lord to bless us in our week. Amen. All right. So here we are. First Corinthians chapter one, verses three through nine. Okay. First Corinthians chapter one, verses three through nine. And, and when you read this word, I want you to think of the word hope, hope, right? Advent season, Advent um, means the arrival right? It's, it's also uh, a derivative of, um, we get the word adventure from it. So we're an, on an adventure with God. It's a, the arrival and we anticipate God's second coming and then we celebrate his first coming. That is what the season of Advent is. And because we just lit the hope candle, I want you to think about hope, hope as we read this. Okay. So here we are, First Corinthians chapter one, verses three through nine. And it reads thusly, 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, uh, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him, you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a very short meditation. As I said, when we went into this, I want you to think about hope. And this scripture is hopeful in so many, so many respects. Well, how uh, how can it be hopeful? Here, here's one way that it's hopeful. When Paul wrote this letter to the church at Corinth, it wasn't a good situation. The church was, um, they were divisive. They had they had um, factions in the church. They, there was arguments. There was immoral behavior. There was all types of things that were just out of, in disarray, we'll say. It was in disarray, all right? So in, in, in a way, it was just not a good situation. However, Paul pens this letter to the church at Corinth, and he begins it with, Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. When situations are bad, when you come into a situation that's very, very bad, and you find a way to greet people with the grace and the peace of the Lord, that is hopeful. There is hope there. And he has this beautiful way in which he is addressing and uh, greeting and talking to these people in such a way that he doesn't start off and say, guys, guys, what's going on? This is just a bad situation. He brings them grace and peace from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then he tells them how he, he thanks God for them. And then he goes on to give them this encouraging exhortation by saying that, um, uh, you know, I, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as a testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? He, en he, he encourages them with an enriching word that says you are not lacking in the spiritual gifts of God. Oh, I want to strengthen and encourage you. And this is why I thank God for you. And he gives them this wonderful, positive exhortation. At the, isn't, that, isn't that hopeful uh, at the beginning of his greeting? Isn't that hopeful? And so we give God praise and we give him glory because although sometimes it feels as though the bottom has, has dropped out and it feels as though sometimes life is in such a disarray um, that you can be strengthened and, and encouraged to know that God has provided you richly with gifts. All right. And so once again, I'm back there again. I know it. I think I said this a couple of weeks ago. Come on. We got it. We have to discover our spiritual gifts and we have to hone them. Got to give attention to them. And now we, we're in the season of giving them back. All right. It's always we always give our gifts back. But come on. This is the season. Come on. Come on. We want to give give, give our gifts back uh, into the kingdom of God so that so that the kingdom can grow and it can prosper and it can flourish. And we want to be people who are thriving and flourishing as well. All right. So really that that is that is my word for you in this season as you wait for the Lord and as you prepare for the Christmas season, 
come on, let's let's get let's get in the word of God and say, Lord, show me what my spiritual gift is. If you don't know what it is, God will reveal it to you. And then Lord, give me a way in which I can use my gift. I want to unwrap it and I want to share it. All right. And so that is where we are. We want to, we want to uh give uh our put our spiritual gifts to good use. Amen. Amen. Because God has enriched us greatly with them. And he's also strengthening us. All right. He's enriched us and he's he's strengthening us. Now, yes, I do know that this is a letter to the church at Corinth. Uh, This is not personally penned to me, but we want to draw some application from this in the same way that as they had problems and as they had situations, we in our lives, we have problems, we have situations, but God always extends grace and peace to us. Amen. And so on that note, let us rest. Let's rest in the grace and the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, let's rest together. Father, once again, we want to thank you for this season. We want to thank you for the Advent season, this new beginning, this time of preparing our hearts to receive our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, as the baby and yes, um, as the soon coming King, as he will return. And so we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for this season. And we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. All right, my friends, I'm going to sign off and I want you all to have a wonderful week and we'll see you all at the very next rest stop. Bye. Oh, oh, whoop. I am I have not signed off. All right. Well, I'll see you all at the very next. Oh my goodness, I can't find rest stop. Bye. <laughs>